Hi everyone, I'm Tongi, Product Manager at Kailak, and I'm very glad to welcome you to the second episode of the second season of Kailak's Academy dedicated to space division multiplexing. As we described in the first episode, over the last decades, new techniques have been developed to meet the ever-increasing demand for more bandwidth in fiber optic network. Today, the Shannon limit has been reached in single mode fiber in the laboratory, and we must investigate other solutions to push back this barrier of limitless bandwidth without having to deploy new fibers that require a lot of civil engineering. Space division replexing is one solution for that. It's a technique used to push back this barrier of limitless bandwidth that consists of using the special modes of light. These modes act as independent information bearing channels while remaining compatible with other multiplexing or data modulation technology. What do you need for space division multiplexing? Firstly, you need a multiplexer to encode the information and finally a demultiplexer to decode it and between them a multimode fiber to allow this multi-channel transmission. Sometimes people use what we call a few mode fiber which has a lower core diameter and also a lower modal content. To understand SDM architecture, you must imagine single mode fibers as input. Each input is then converted into a mode, a given shape inside the fiber. At the end of the path, the information is converted back to into single mode fibers. What type of shapes are used for SDM? To realize this type of multiplexing, we use what we call modes. Modes are a family of monochromatic solutions of the propagation equation. When a waveguide, here the fiber, is traversed by an electromagnetic wave, here the light, its behavior is defined by the equation of light propagation in this guide. The solutions of this equation are called the modes of the optical fiber. Depending on the type of fiber, there are different families of modes. The set of modes for a family constitutes a base whose mathematical properties gives them an orthogonality property. This orthogonality is very interesting as it allows independence between all channels. A mode can commonly be defined as a light path in the fiber. Using this technique, compatible with all existing technologies described in our first episode, we can therefore imagine multiplying the data rates within the fiber in proportion to the number of new independent channels created by this type of multiplexing. In the next episode, we will look at Kylab's robust special multiplexer. So thank you for listening and see you soon for the next one.